Red City volunteers provided food baskets and supplements to children in need. Two weeks vegetarian lunch boxes changed Nurse Dai Xiaorong's views on her eating habits. Welcome to Diet Headlines. I'm just Ho. Thank you for joining us. City volunteers from Ciudad del Este of Paraguay crossed the borders to Brazil's Foz de Iguazo to provide food baskets to disadvantaged students for Children's Day. A nutrition center also received several special formula they needed to help supplement for children in their care. The back of the vehicle is filled with aid items as it's all heading to the border city of Foz de Iguazu, Brazil to help disadvantaged children. Most of our students are minority students, and this can help supplement their health with a balanced diet. They can keep up with their health. The bag full of food can feed a family of five for up to a month. I want to say thank you. These supplies are such a great help to our family. This children's nutrition center has also received the special formula they need as donations have decreased lately and they haven't been able to afford to buy this expensive formula. Instead, they reached out to Tsuji asking for help and Tsuji gladly responded with a donation. This group of students also received a special children's day gift. Thank you so much. We'll continue operations and be able to change lives of children and teenagers around. Thank you, Tsuji. You have our respect. Thank you so much. The school takes in children from poverty-stricken areas. Volunteer Xie Hong, on behalf of his mother donated 135 sets of school supplies, which is something his mother loved to do before her passing. When the volunteers heard someone lost their roof in a big storm, they also brought 10 roof tiles to help make repairs. Thank you for the roof tiles. Myself, my wife, and my son are ever so grateful. Unwilling to bear the suffering of others, Paraguay Tsuji volunteers cross borders to ensure that Tsuji's love is spread broader and wider. The continuous pandemic in Malaysia is having a tremendous livelihood effect on refugees. Company owners could not bear to see infants and children lacking the much-needed nutrients. They donated milk powder to those in need. During the pandemic, countless refugees did not have three meals a day. There is a company owner who couldn't bear the thought of infants without enough nutrition. Donated milk powder to the refugees in need. Because we can't reach out to these communities, so we choose to cooperate with Tsuji to donate these organic milk powder to the families in need. Putting compassion into actions, the employees of the company participated in a distribution for refugees and felt a lot. I think I am very blessed because I still have three meals to eat. We, the capable, should help those in need. Tsuzi Kuala Lumpur and Selangan chapter also provide cash vouchers to refugees to meet their daily needs. I have four children and my family already six person. You gave me the cash voucher. I so, I so very feel like, like uh, happy because uh, very, very help to me. They can have their urgent and immediate needs with this 150 cash voucher. Temena, who is also a refugee, joined the rank of volunteers to help translate and chat the distribution list. Uh, when I uh, help them, it, uh, it gave me good, uh, good feeling. Yeah. Volunteers specially delivered the cash vouchers to those who could not come in person. Gathering love from all walks of life, volunteers tried their best to spread kindness to refugee families, helping them survive the difficult times. The blood bank reserves in Sabah, Malaysia, have been low in stock due to COVID-19. Tsuji Sabah's Kota Kinabalu branch hosted a blood drive for the first time, hoping to encourage blood donations. As Sabah holds the highest number of thalassemia patients in Malaysia, Tsuji volunteers also took the opportunity to educate donors about the disease. 
The volunteers turned their recycling station into a blood donation drive venue with detailed effort. This time, due to the pandemic, a lot of people have been afraid of going to the hospital to donate blood, which means our blood bank is low. So we are happy and willing to do something for society. In Sabah, thalassemia patients account for over 20 percent of that of Malaysia. So besides donating blood to save a stranger in an accident, they might be able to save their own friends and family as well. Thalassemia is a genetic disease and hereditary, so it's something that is avoidable. If people did pyramidal screening, then it's avoidable. Partnering with the hospital and also doing a little health education in just a few short hours, 92 bags of blood were collected. I am really afraid of needles, but I encourage myself to come and give blood because it's possible that I might be able to save more lives. I'm in the funeral business and we are also promoting valuing life. If we can help people, then we should help as much as we can. Saving a life needs a bit of passion and courage. And during this year, Dr. Ming Wei Wu applied to receive a donation of hand sanitizers from City U.S. headquarters to send to Belize. Following a discussion with the director of U.S. City Medical Mission, Dr. Wu decided to support City's free clinic events in Las Vegas by providing his three clinics as event venues as well as medical services. Medical professionals have a responsibility, often sacrificing themselves for another. A husband and wife pair of medical doctors have the same mindset as Tiji. I'm a surgeon and my wife is in internal medicine. We have three clinics at the Chinatown in Las Vegas. My thinking is that we can lend our clinic for Tiji to host free clinics, whichever types is okay. We can also check on the patients since they are here. We can check their vision, dental, and if they are controlling their blood glucose levels. This affinity began because during the pandemic, there was a kind donation of hand sanitizers. And Dr. Wu visited Southern California to pick up said hand sanitizers, which led to him getting to know Tsuji and speaking with the director of the Tsuji Medical Foundation, William Ku, in a partnership. Besides visiting the Humanity Health Center, Tsuji Foundation staff also visited Toro University, Nevada to speak about a possible student exchange program. In another country, we have uh, out-of-country rotations right now for students, and I would love for Taiwan to be one of those places. Mm -hmm. So our students have been working with Su Chi in Las Vegas to do vaccine events, and then in the next couple of months, we're also going to be working together to do um, medical, uh, provide medical care for people at Su Chi events. Eleven medical outreaches later, Tsuji Tima in Las Vegas continues to grow. And there are now also donated medical equipment and some funds for other equipment in hopes of providing better service in the future. Jingshu Hall vaccination stations provide vegetarian meals for medical professionals and volunteers. Assisting the national vaccination program, nurse Dai Xiaorong had vegetarian lunches for two weeks straight. Having found the meals made her more energetic, she decided to continue with vegetarianism. At the Mingchun Liaison Office's vaccination station, everyone worked for the entire morning as it is lunchtime now. Volunteers have prepared delicious vegetarian lunch boxes. The meal service changed the nurse's eating habits as she has been here for half a month. I ate vegetarian meals during lunchtime, and after leaving, I feel energetic and won't feel any exhaustion. Changing her eating habits, the results are obvious, and it made nurse Tai Xiaorong decide to continue the vegetarian trend in her life. 
plates filled with vegetables of five colors. 47-year-old nurse Dai Xiorong is now 15 years into her nursing profession. After the pandemic, Dai Xiorong participated in many vaccination station missions, as she normally takes care of seniors at long-term care institutes. During interaction, I will reflect on myself. Since I'm going into the mid and old age of my life, I should be careful with what I eat. Though nurse Dai Xiorong originally had intentions to eat vegetarian food, the food provided at the Jingsi Hall made her act, changing her and her family's eating habits. In the face of cancer, the Western medicine treatments by surgery, chemotherapy and radiotherapy are the mainstream first options. However, the side effects can often be unbearable for the patients. Taizong Tsuji Hospital's Chinese medicine doctors collaborate with the oncologist to better help cancer patients in the treatment process. At that time, my hands and feet were really weak, and I was thinking this is not happening. The doctor said that I should go to the hospital the next day. Then when I came back, I cried with my husband. At that time, I thought, how could it be like this? I told my husband that if it was really true, I don't have long to live. Wang Yunlan, a lymphoma patient, was in terminal stage lymphoma, was discovered at the age of 54 and received 16 chemotherapy and targeted therapy treatments within six months. During the process, the reduction of white blood cells and the side effects of chemotherapy made her almost want to give up treatment. Though a combination of traditional Chinese and Western medicine, she was able to survive chemotherapy and successfully fight cancer. I did chemotherapy and target treatments eight times each. So when I did chemotherapy and targeted therapy for the first time, it was in the evening. The next morning, I couldn't get up and my whole body was paralyzed and I could feel that my feet were swollen. After drinking the TCM decoction, the next day, I felt better physically and the pain was bearable. How can a combination of Chinese and Western medicine achieve the best results in cancer treatment? Taizong Ziji Hospital traditional Chinese physician Zhuang Jiaying pointed out that Chinese medicine can repair damaged cells in patients, allowing Western medicine to fight the cancer while giving patients the physical strength to survive chemotherapy and radiotherapy. Tailor-made Chinese medicine prescriptions keep a close eye on physical changes and help allay their cancer fears. Actually, I felt very uneasy because her pulse condition and pulse diagnosis are very weak. But there is something like what Mr. Huang Jinming said in the middle. The negative pulse is damp and hot, so I'm worried about her. Li Dian Kun, director of the oncology department of Taichung Ziji Hospital, pointed out that the purpose of combining Chinese and Western medicine is to save patients. We are facing the same patient, the patient's condition, and we have to communicate. We have to figure out the best way to treat the patient. The patients of Chinese medicine reinterpret some of the wisdom of our ancient ancestors in Chinese medicine. Some is true and some are false. We used modern science to verify it. The number of people suffering from cancer in Taiwan is as high as 110,000 each year, and cancer is a top 10 cause of death. Ziji physician Zhuang Jiaying, a TCM physician in Taichung, uses the scientific empirical training of Western medicine to combine the strengths of Chinese and Western medicine, helping patients successfully fight cancer. Due to the pandemic, the team of volunteers have now been able to visit the elderly living in Sanzhi, New Taipei, for almost half a year. Earlier this month, they were finally able to resume their regular home visits, where Uncle Ma was very eager to see everyone once again and express gratitude to his wife with the volunteers' encouragement. <laughs> because of the pandemic, the elderly living in Sanzhi have waited for nearly half a year for this visit. He has been waiting for us at the gate. When we arrived, he said we have not come for a long time. 
It has really been a long time since team members came last time. The 94-year-old Grandpa Ma kept talking. He even spoke out loud his love for his wife. I call her Atao. I love you. Atao smiled and nodded. I think she should feel very blessed. The wife has terminal cancer and also suffers from dementia, making this family cherish every moment of being together. She's actually facing the last stage of life with Uncle Ma by her side. Actually, in this family, they mostly need people's care. For every household Tima daughters visited, they will feel a bit warmer in their hearts. The one get healed is always the heart of the doctors. He asked me when we will go next month. I said we will come in the second week. Then he quickly marked it down on his calendar and said he will be waiting for us. Being expected and needed makes Timur daughters accomplish their missions with love in remote villages. Tijin University's nursing students and Guanshan Tiji Hospital's mobile team visited a rural indigenous village in Haiduan, Taidong. The elderly living there commonly have difficulties getting to hospitals or clinics, so the Guanshan medical team has been visiting since 2002 to provide the much-needed medical services and health education. They mostly suffer from chronic diseases like diabetes, high blood pressure and liver disease. How do we help them understand the disease better? It's hard for them to listen to us if we are not locals. Listening carefully to what to look out for during their visit, the nursing students from Hualien Zhiji University are at Wulu Indigenous Village to check on the health of the elderly. With their teacher and a local guide, these students take down their seniors' blood pressure and check on their health while also providing some educational information. Learning from the textbook, we know what to say and what to do in the situation. However, when we actually are at a person's home, it's more about the way you talk to the patient or health education. I think those need more emphasis and training. They live up in the mountains, so it is harder for them to head down the mountains to see a doctor. When we are here, we get a better understanding of the difficulties they encountered if they need medical care. It's good for the students to experience how a medical professional can be involved in a community. We can see them in the future contributing serving remote townships. Education and medical care are helping this group of future nurses understand what they need to do to serve remote regions. In Qishan, Kaohsiung, there is a group of elderly baristas with an average age of 80, changing from the three-in-one instant coffee drinking habits. These elders have learned to brew pool over coffees. The oldest barista, Wu Guizhen, is having a great time introducing making and serving coffees. <laughs> I can serve everyone here, and everyone is chanting and laughing. If the water drips slowly, the better it tastes as it won't be too watery. She always teaches us to practice more, so practice makes it perfect. Pour it down and wait for it to swell up. Handmade coffee is done by these grandmas. Among them is Wu Guizhen, who is 86 years old and is now a great-grandmother. This time, after I discharge from the hospital, my hands will tremble. It's from Honduras. Is it delicious? Oh. It feels like my own home. We can meet many elders here. Seems like meeting my grandmother. I have difficulty using scales because the letters are relatively small. Although the memories of this group of grandmothers may not be good, they have to climb to the second floor to open the cafe. Last time, there was a group of elderly people. All of them are in their 70s. Five of them did not come up. Some people are very curious about what the second floor is doing. I said that it is a cafe with 70 to 80 years old grandmas making coffee. After that, those five people climbed up the staircase very slowly. It took almost a minute to reach the top. 
These grandmas have encountered many hardships, making these small difficulties nothing to them. Guizhen has 10 grandchildren and 8 great-grandchildren. She still worked in the farm until she was 79 years old. I worked too very old. Sometimes people will say, I'm so old to work. Now I'm relaxed. I will be happy when there are customers coming. That's awesome. The first time I saw these grandmas are so strong. Grandma Guizhen always encourages her peers, and she often urges herself to keep on. <laughs> she does very well, she can do everything. Although illiterate, a willingness to learn is her philosophy of life. I am bored. If I don't go out, I will be alone watching TV. This is not good. I'm afraid of getting Alzheimer. <laughs> she told me that she would study hard and be happy. Being optimistic despite that they're aged, these grandma baristas will continue to serve the community. 52-year-old Zheng Zichun has been painting for 30 years. His exhibitions have circled the globe and received several special exhibition awards in Germany and Japan. Recently, he completed a large-scale painting named Lushan Mountain as a tribute to Zhang Daqian. He encountered many setbacks in his school days, but his courageous spirit allowed him to become an internationally renowned artist. Condensing the essence of 30 years of painting with brushstrokes vertically and horizontally combined with a splashing of color and freehand brushwork shows the painter's grandeur. That kind of thing is very difficult. Zhang Daqian's Lu San is almost a masterpiece. If one day my technique is mature and established, shouldn't I make big painting like this to pay tribute to Master Zhang Daqian? 10 meters long and 2.1 meters wide, Cheng Jichun revealed the huge painting Lu San Mountain tribute to Zhang Daqian. I was very shocked to see this painting. It was spectacular and I admired it very much. He persevered and showed different skills, showing his international outlook is broader. The contrast between pink and green is quite fascinating. I want to express the Chinese landscape. The pure white ink of the stone texture is very difficult to make. The bold and meticulous use of color is an accumulated skill. When he was in junior high school, he studied in a class designated for underachievers. But Chang Jingchun never gave up on painting. The underachievers class was because the teacher didn't care about your advancement in school, and this led my obsession with painting to get stronger and stronger. I made up my mind to be a professional painter. On the world stage tour, Chen Jingchun's painting stood out for more than 600 international class works at the Tokyo Metropolitan Museum of Art, winning a gold medal. But he didn't let the honor get to him as he wanted to reach the pinnacle again. Every time I compare myself, there are surprises everywhere. So I'll enjoy this process. Tsuji Foundation collaborates with an online gaming company for the first time to host an e-sport competition to promote environmental friendliness and disaster prevention. A simulation competition was held in Taipei to prepare for the finals. Thank you for joining us and see you next time.